Today I'm going to take a look at another bit of audio recording hardware I've bought. And this should be the last video of audio stuff for a while, because I know I've been doing a lot of it recently. But I've bought this, which is the Fethead Phantom. In a previous video we, take a look, we took a look at my Tascam DR40X recorder, and I'm using that with my new Sony ECM77B microphone. And it works really well, but one of my complaints about this is that it has quite noisy preamps. That means that when I'm recording this microphone, I have to set the gain on this to around 65, and at that point there's a constant background hiss that you get in the recording. Normally I use a noise reduction plugin, and that does take it out, but I also feel that that impacts the sound slightly. I've, there's been a couple of times when I've edited the audio and I've noticed there's like slight digital artifacts in the sound, and all I can really put that down to being is the noise reduction plugin. For this video I've actually got that plugin switched off just because I'm trying to actually demonstrate the FET head. So what you'll probably hear right now, if, especially if I'm quiet, is a slight background hiss in the audio. So that was it there, and it really depends on your speakers. It's quite high frequency, so if you've got speakers or headphones that have good high frequency range, you'll probably notice it more than if you're listening on like a phone or something. But I tend to use like reference studio monitors and reference headphones, and I really notice that background hiss, and I find it really annoying. So this is the Fethead Phantom. And what this is, is a little XLR inline preamp that sh what it should do, will amp it will amplify the signal from my microphone to a much higher level and do so without in introducing noise because it's a good quality preamp. And that will let me turn down the level on the preamps on the Tascam because obviously the preamps in this aren't as good. So I'll turn those down and that will reduce the noise level coming from the Tascam and this will add that additional gain instead. Devices such as the FET head and cloud lifter and various other inline preamps have existed for a long time and they're quite popular. But generally they're designed for dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones don't use phantom power themselves and they produce quite a low output signal and that means that they're really important because it's quite hard to get a preamp or an interface or a recorder that will accept the levels from a dynamic microphone without introducing noise unless you go to something really high end. But as I mentioned they're designed for dynamic microphones which don't, don't require phantom power. My microphone here, which as I mentioned is a Sony ECM77B, is a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones generally have a much louder output signal, well, well they do, I mean this one does as well. They're much louder than dynamic microphones, so you don't usually need a preamp as often. And additionally, the microphone requires phantom power, so this recorder is feeding to 48 volts down to this microphone, and that's powering the electronics in the microphone. Now while I could use something like a FET header cloud lifter in this, it wouldn't pass the phantom power through to the microphone, which means I would need to then add a AA battery into my microphone to then power the mic, and that's just a bit annoying. The FET head Phantom, on the other hand, is a more interesting product, because what this does is this also fat passes the phantom power that comes into it back out to the microphone. So this is designed for condenser microphones. So that should be quite cool to try out. So let's take a look. Now, this device costs around £60, so it's not super cheap, but if this helps my audio quality, in as much as I'm hoping it will, it'll be really good. So this is here, comes a little bag, and if we pull it out, all you see is just a little XLR thing, with a male jack on one end, female jack on the other, and you literally just put it in line. And as you can see there, it says Fethead Phantom. So if you're buying one of these, if you're planning on using it with only dynamic microphones, you're never going to use a condenser mic, then you may as well go for the original Fethead, and that provides an additional 27 decibels of gain. On the other hand, if you're using a condenser microphone, or a microphone that requires phantom power, the Fethead Phantom, it only provides about 18 decibels of gain, so it doesn't have as much gain, but it will then pass the phantom power through to your microphone, so you don't need to worry about any external power. If you're using a mix of microphones, then it becomes a bit more tricky, because if you bought the original Fethead and wanted to use a condenser microphone, you would need to find an external way to power the condenser microphone. However, if you've got the Fethead Phantom, you could only use that if your microphone can at least survive phantom power. Your microphone doesn't have to use phantom power to work with this, but you need a microphone that won't get damaged by feeding phantom power into it. And I think it just depends. I think some dynamic mics are okay and some aren't, and like ribbon microphones aren't, I think. There's something about that, so you need to be very careful and make sure your microphone can survive phantom power if you plan on using a Fethead Phantom with a microphone that wouldn't normally use phantom power. The other option as well could be that you could buy a Fethead Phantom and then if you're using it with a microphone that can't survive phantom power, 
you can get a separate add-on phantom power blocker and that would prevent the phantom power being fed up to your microphone. So that could be another option potentially. But essentially this is a really simple device. All it does is just get itself powered over phantom power, pass the power through to my microphone and amplify the signals passed through it by about 18 decibels. And all that really means is that the signal coming to my recorder will be louder so I can turn the gain on the recorder down and that will hopefully help eliminate that preamp noise. So let's try it out. Now what I'll do is I'll actually plug this in live on camera so you can hear the difference. But obviously if I plugged it in right now, it would absolutely clip like mad because I'm currently recording at a fairly high recording level to get this audio level out of this microphone. So what I'll do is I'll turn the gain on the recorder down and then come back in and put this in line. So in the next clip, it will start off really quietly because I'm, I'll have the gain set much lower. So just bear that in mind, don't go turning the volume up and then get a fright when I put, plug the FET head in. But this will hopefully be, good, be a good demonstration just to show how much more this amplifies the signal. So let's try this out. Okay, so I'm back. And whereas previously the task I was recording I had a recording level of 65 set, it's now turned down to 35, so I'll be a lot quieter. But now, if we plug the FET head in, we'll hear how much louder I am. So let's do that. And now you're hearing me through the FET head phantom. And as you can see, even though I've not touched any controls on this, the gain is set to exactly what it was before. Because this, this preamp's in line now, I am so much louder. And hopefully what you'll notice from earlier, back when I was recording at this similar volume, but without the FET head and with the gain set higher on the task cam, hopefully now you'll notice that there's a lot less background noise. That background hiss is totally gone, basically. It's really reduced it down a lot lower. So what I'll now do is I'll go into a few tests where I basically switch between the DR40X without the FET head phantom and the DR40X with the FET head phantom. And we'll just see for the same sort of overall output volume, how much less noise you can hear with the FET head phantom installed. So this is a test of the recording with the FET head phantom installed. And if I'm quiet, hopefully you can hear there's a very low noise level. And what I'll now do is I'll be silent for a bit and then jump over without to, have to not have the FET head. And I'll start that clip off with a bit of silence as well, so you can hear the noise floor jump up before, before I start talking. So we'll do that now. So what you're now hearing is the same sort of overall output volume, but without the FET head phantom installed and the gain turned up on the task cam. And hopefully when I'm quiet especially, you'll potentially hear that additional noise that this is now recording. So I'll be quiet now and let you hear that. So there's another test I'm going to do. I'm going to test my noise reduction plugin to see how the sound quality differs between the task cam without the FET head but with the noise reduction plugin enabled versus using the FET head without the noise reduction. So I'll now be quiet for a second, turn the noise reduction plugin on so you'll hear the difference that makes, and then I'll come back and we'll listen to my voice with the noise reduction plugin, and then we'll put the FET head back in, turn the noise reduction plugin off, and we'll see how that sounds. So we'll turn the noise reduction plugin on now. So I'm now back with the noise reduction plugin on, and you can hear that does take the noise down quite a bit, but obviously that's a lot of additional effort when I'm editing, so it's, that takes additional time. And I feel it, there's been times I've noticed it impact the audio quality. I don't know how much that'll come across on this video or if it really depends on like background noise or, or how I'm talking or what I'm saying. But what we'll now do is I'll go quiet for a little bit again, we'll put the FET head in, and then we'll see how it differs between having the FET head without the noise reduction plugin versus not having the FET head but using the noise reduction plugin. We'll see what we think sounds better. Okay, and now I'm back with the FET head installed and no noise reduction plugin again. And I've played about with this a little bit before I filmed this, and I do think it sounds a lot better, at least to my ears, using the FET head without the noise reduction plugin than using it without the FET head and the noise reduction plugin. In particular, I used to have to do a lot of EQing to try and get it sounding remotely decent with the noise reduction plugin installed. Whereas I'd found without the noise reduction plugin, the only EQing I ever really did was a roll off below 100 hertz and a roll off above 10 kilohertz, which is just normal for voice. So I found it to be a lot better. And I don't know if it'll come across on the video or after YouTube compression, but there's a little test. 
Now as another test, I've opened up the two audio sample recordings that I did earlier with the FET head and without the FET head and pulled them into Audacity. In Audacity I've opened up this view and what this does is it shows along the x-axis along the bottom you've got time and on the y-axis you've got frequency. So what this is showing is what frequencies are loud at what particular time. And this really visually shows the difference between these two recordings. As you can see down in the lower frequencies, you can see my voice. But what you can see is in periods where my voice is silent, there's all this sort of noise, the static you can see. Additionally, at the higher frequencies that are much higher than my voice, you can also see on the recording without the FET head, there's this constant noise, this constant static that you can see. Whereas if we look at the recording from the FET head, you can see all that static and noise totally disappears. And that's what makes such a difference. There is still this tiny little bit of noise at the very low frequencies, but I suspect that what that actually might be is I've got a server rack in the corner of my room and that has a very subtle fan noise. And I suspect this noise here might actually just be that being picked up. And the thing is, even if that is some sort of noise from this recording setup, which I'm not convinced on, it's at least at a frequency level that's covered by my voice. So when I talk, that noise is totally hidden by my voice. And then in the quieter sections where my voice isn't, where I'm not talking, I use an expander plugin and that just drops the gain slightly when I'm not talking and that will totally get rid of that noise, it'll push it down a lot quieter. Whereas with the noise from the Tascam, without the FET head installed, what you can see is there's so much noise at a higher frequency than my voice, or at least a higher frequency than where most of my voice is. So it means there's that constant hiss and you can't really EQ that away because there's still a tiny little bit of my voice up there. And when you start EQing that away, you do reduce the noise in the high frequencies, but you also start making my voice sound really thin and weird. So you need to have those high frequencies there, at least for the most part. But then that noise is a lot more noticeable because it's not really covered up by my voice. So yeah, I thought this was just a pretty interesting visualization of essentially what you're hearing. Yeah, definitely seems to work. So I also thought we'd do a quick teardown of it, just because I'm interested to see what's in here really because it's going to be a very simple circuit for that much money, but realistically, you're paying a lot for the design and the form factor, and it is a really nice little device, and it's so convenient. So, there's an outer, a look at the outer sort of casing, very nice little metal thing, just to show a bit closer. You've got an XLR jack on that end, and jack on that end. And interestingly, on the back, it's actually made in Holland, so it's actually made in Europe, so that's pretty cool. So on the back, there's just these two screws, so hopefully if we take those out, the XLR jacks will probably just pull out and we'll be able to get into it. And one thing I would say is there's another channel on YouTube I think called Mads Tech. I'll try and put a link in if I remember. And he did a teardown of the normal FET head, not the Phantom. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares visually to the, the original FET head, to see what the difference is between the FET head and the FET head Phantom. Now I will say this is way out with my realms of electronics knowledge. I have some basic knowledge, but it's more on things like digital electronics and stuff like that, not analog audio stuff like this. So I won't really be able to explain how it works, but we'll just take a sort of visual look at it. Cool, so that's the um, female end pulled out there, but there's just some wires. So I suspect the stuff will actually be on the other end. So let's see if we can get that back in. Yeah, that's how this jack's coming out. So if we can pull the male end out. So carefully untwist the wires inside, and there we go. So yeah, actually this is different to that other video and his FET head. So on his one, all it really had is just, I think, four JFETs on the back and then a couple of resistors. This one has these two large capacitors up here. And now if we take a look on the other side, yep, we've, got, we've still got the, the four JFETs, which are over here. They appear to be labelled XG on them. And I've noticed there's four, so I, sus I don't know if they're maybe running these in parallel or series, I don't know which way you do it. Um, like they're Essentially, they're using two smaller ones per channel rather than one large one, because, yeah, there's, there's four. And what they'll have is, I imagine, t um, this is all speculation, I've not actually sort of probed this out, but I suspect two of these will do the hot and two of these will do the cold. So because it's a balanced signal, you'll need one for each of those channels. There's just a couple of like, resistors here. A couple of big grey silver things that look totally unlabeled, so I don't know what those are. 
and then yeah you've got these two big capacitors on this side. But interestingly there is a lot more in this compared to the original FET head from that other video because on his one, I definitely recommend checking that video out if you're interested, but on his one you just really had like the four JFETs along the back, none of these big capacitors or anything, and the board seemed a bit smaller as well. So it's kind of interesting. I suppose it's maybe just, I don't know if there's circuitry here that's having to like extract the phantom power and then re-inject it or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's a quick look inside it. And obviously it's an extremely simple device. You know, there's, there's not much to these sort of circuits. I mean, you can find circuit diagrams for microphone preamps all over the place online. They're such a basic circuit. But with this, what you're really paying for is all the design that's gone into it and just having such a convenient form factor. Because, yeah, sure, I could have probably built my own microphone preamp or something, but it wouldn't have been in this nice form factor. And by the amount of time I would end up spending trying to do it, it probably would work out cheaper overall just to buy one of these. So yeah, that's a pretty neat little device to take apart. Extremely simple, but it definitely seems to make a big difference. So all we need to do now is try and get these screws back in and hope I've not broken it. So there you go. That was a look at the Fethead Phantom from Triton Audio. And I think it makes a big difference. Now, I don't know how much of a difference you get across on camera and over, over YouTube and stuff like that, but at least for me, I found it a lot easier to work with. I don't have to muck about with plugins. I don't have to then try and EQ a lot after that plugin because that was a difference I didn't really expect where I found I needed to EQ quite a lot just to get it sounding decent using that noise reduction plugin. Whereas having the FET head in and not using the noise reduction plugin didn't seem to need nearly as much EQing. So it seems to have made a difference. And yeah, I'm very happy with it. Now as for the price, £60 does seem like quite a lot for what you're getting, but realistically, this is a professional bit of audio equipment and so much of the effort goes into the overall design, the manufacturing, actually getting it in this nice little form factor. And that's just something that this is really good for because yeah, it's very, a very simple device in terms of a circuit, but just having a simple device that I can just plug in in line without additional power, without needing any additional cables, you know, it's a nice little inline thing, it's not a separate box. It's just a really nice little device. So I'm very happy with it. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in buying one of these, there's links in the description.